We are back on Flashpoint. We're going for the younger demographics today here on the That's big right. program. Last week or earlier this week, when Mike and Burns were oh at, Mike and Burns, did I say Mike and Burns? Mike oh, and Burns did, did it for I'm, ten years, yeah. <laughs> but for some reason Burns couldn't do President Burns at OU at OU President okay. Leadership Class. Mike for some reason Burns. I was filling in for Burns. Yeah, yeah. go ahead, go ahead. Well, you're at, at, at President Burns President Leadership Class. His leadership class met these two young Turkey. people and said. You know, what? Flash they would be good on Flashpoint. <laughs> so Kirk calls me and Mike calls me yep. and they said, let's have these two young people on. So here they are. Yep. Tessa Breeder is from Tulsa. Tessa, oh, I am really getting all messed up here. <laughs> no, the, Bur no. the Burns, the Burns analogy. We love you, Burns, up. but it was, it was Kirk and I this time. <laughs> Tessa is from Norman, and she is with the College Republicans. Right. Mm -hmm. And over here we have Grant McLaughlin. Grant is from Tulsa, and he is with the Young Democrats at OU, and they're here to talk about trying to get young people of both political parties and the independents fired up to go out there and tell them the uh, politicians what they want by voting. Which I think is a great thing. Yeah. I mean, right. any time we can get young people involved in any part of our of our culture, our, our, our businesses, our electoral process, that's a great deal. It is. Tessa, ladies first, we'll start with you. Oh, great. How has the registration drive gone, and what are you telling folks about your candidates right now? The registration drive has been going well. We've actually been doing, um, both Grant and I have been doing kind of drives on our own right now, um, but we're getting ready to start off 2008 and 2008 where um, it's going to be a huge, huge campus-wide um, effort to really get out the youth vote. I think what's really special about this election is that how how much interest it's drawn from the youth crowd that we haven't seen in a long, long time. Okay, what do you attribute that to, Barack Obama or now Sarah Palin? Um, I think both of them have been a tremendous help. Both um, Barack has done a great job getting out those on his side, but also those out on my side. Um, now, is McCain exciting many or are they excited about Palin? <laughs> I must say, ahead, Palin, say Palin has been a huge pull. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Pull. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I would say on campus, we've been able to really get a lot done because people are excited. They're actually paying attention to issues. And these are people that didn't ever have political conversations with you. And they're up and they're asking you about questions about the cost of college, health care, um, you know, the war in Iraq. I think that's a big issue that plays with a lot of kids because they know a lot of people that are directly tied into the war in Iraq. And so that issue is playing front and center, I would say. Now, time. Grant, you were uh, in the Hillary camp. Yes. Uh, was that a bitter defeat, or are you excited, just as excited about Barack Obama? I'm excited about the policies that Barack Obama stands for, such as expanding health care access to Americans, um, also expanding the number of good paying jobs, and also p the, his alternative energy plans are very similar to Hillary Clinton's. Throughout the primary, they had very similar stances. It's just the only reason I liked uh, Hillary more so than Obama was that she has a tad bit more experience. But Obama's got the same sort of ideas and plans to move our country forward, not backward, like we've seen with more of the same. What do you see on campus? Is it about 50-50? Kirk and I were there at the President's Leadership Conference. It seemed like the And it was, was Kirk, not Burns, right? Yeah. yeah. It was Kirk. Did yeah. I say Burns? No, I, no, I said Kirk. Oh, oh, I say Burns. We love you, buddy. It threw me off for the Burns whole segment. trying to leave you down, yeah. man. But it looked like it was about 50-50 about in that class. Is that how you find it on campus right now? Or? Yeah. Um, I would say OU is definitely a little bit more of a liberal campus rather than conservative, but we've had a tremendous amount of support. I cannot complain at all. Okay, who have you helped in the past? I know you've helped some other politicians. Um, I first, in political races. Yes, I first interned for Thad Balkman. Um, I've also been um, the director of logistics for House Race, Aaron Stiles. Um, okay, okay. I've also done some work for Scott Martin, Cole, and Hoff. There you go. How about Team you? Team player. So, so uh, for a young person who's a sophomore in college, you've been around the political arena quite a bit. I have. I actually, sadly, got involved in college Republicans whenever I was still in high school. So <laughs> Sadly. Oh, <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Your background? Uh, well, I'd, I've been uh, on Lieutenant Governor Assen's campaign. I was helped out there. I worked this summer for uh, Senator Tom Adelson from Tulsa. He's the vice chair of the appropriations. But uh, And then also I've worked on just numerous campaigns in different capacities, too many to count, as well as the Hillary campaign during the primaries. And season. tell them real quick who Clark Stroud and Annette Hathaway, who are they? Well, Clark Stroud is the Vice President of Student Affairs at OU, and Annette Hathaway is the head of the President's Leadership Class, and they've been working, especially Clark Stroud's been working 
to coordinate the whole program that Tessa had mentioned, 2008 and 2008, the OU votes. And so they're trying to get the campus leaders, those people in the president's leadership class, enthused and behind this thing so that it will be really successful so that we can have not these people just register, but get out and vote. And Clark Stroud has been one of the most enthusiastic administrators on campus. He's just always advocating for the students. Yeah, yeah, Tessa, yeah, yeah, Tessa yeah, Grant yeah. told us what was important to the Democrats and what he liked in, uh, in the Obama uh, platform. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think has energized the uh, g girls your age about Sarah Palin, what what's, what impact has she had? I think er, the girls I've at least been talking to are really impressed with how how normal she is. I mean, mm -hmm. people have been going on and on, I understand, about her 17-year-old daughter, but that's something people can relate to. This is, mm -hmm. this is, I mean, it's a family problem, or not actually a problem, it's a blessing, but people are viewing well, this as a problem. It's a problem and a blessing, yeah. 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 But this is something I think a lot of people can relate to just as every family has their issues and it's just something she's going to have to deal with and I think she's been doing a phenomenal job. And so the, the people you talk to think she's very real. Yes, okay. absolutely. And do you see, and we talked about this at the top of the show, yeah, at heard. a little different level of volume between Kirk and Mike about Sarah Palin, <laughs> but do you have you seen that she has had an effect on campus too? Well, yeah, a lot of the people who, there's sort of that hypocritical stance of her that has really activated a lot of Democrats because it's it's not necessarily the personal stances on that which I know she's caught a lot of flack for that but one thing I've had a lot of heard a lot of people flagged is about the bridge to nowhere how she was for it before she was against it kind of like the 87 billion dollar question with Kerry in 2004 there's that well is she for reform is she not and that's caught a lot of flack and that has really sort of energized people and also people see it as a slap against Hillary Clinton because she's not Hillary Hillary Clinton, but yet they're trying to dress her up as Hillary. By the time you have all of the information, um, you will have already had to have made the decision. That's how fast politics move, and I think she's just making the best decisions that she can with the information she you has know, at I, the time. So, I mean, I, I applaud her for doing what she thinks is right and admitting she was wrong. Well, well, how do you feel about Hillary Clinton, by the way? I mean, I don't mean what you're going to vote for. You weren't. You're a Republican. But do you think she did anything for women as far as helping you break the glass ceiling? Absolutely. Absolutely. Go ahead, talk about no, it. No, I, I think her and her and uh, Palin both. I think it's yeah. phenomenal. It really has. I mean, either way in this election, we're making history, and I think that is absolutely awesome. That's very Pretty true. Well put. You know, the amazing know. thing about this election is people vote for a candidate they trust and like. Mm -hmm. And you know, we can make arguments against Barack Obama. We can make arguments against Sarah Palin or John McCain mm -hmm. or Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. But at the at the end of the day, people are saying, "Who do I trust? Who do I think is going to be the best commander in chief? Who do I think whose values reflect my values?" I think that's Sarah Palin's greatest strength. Yeah, and, and I think one of the great strengths of Barack Obama is he says, I don't know everything, I'll bring in good people. It's been suggested he might bring in David Bourne. You were in his class. Talk about David Bourne real quick and what you may have learned about him. And use. Well, let's, okay. let's do a, a little bit of uh, mea culpa here. David Bourne is a Barack Obama supporter. Good point. So okay. uh, given that, go ahead. Well, actually with David Bourne in, in his class, his politics really doesn't come out in that. All he really tries to teach about is about the lessons he learned, especially on the Senate Intelligence Committee, where he had so many decisions he had to make and he had to listen to everybody. One of the great stories that he tells, I mean, a zillion times, but <laughs> knowing David Bourne, but is about how he, when he met with uh, President Bush the senior yeah. about going into Iraq mm -hmm. or not, Bush convinced him that he was r dead set wrong and that we didn't have the troops to go in. And, and Bourne wanted to go in. Bourne wanted to go in, and that was sort of the lesson learned that you've got to listen to everybody around you and take in all the information, and you can't just sort of go after things just because you want to. And it's from strange places come great advice and great people and do everything you can to do to build up trust with not just people who agree with you, but people who disagree with you. What do you think about that comment? Well, I think, like you said, actually, I think this is kind of similar to what we're going through right now, working together on this to really... Get people registered. Absolutely. Yeah. To get involved. Yeah. Absolutely. And so I think just kind of taking everyone's advice in and things like has, that. Has this race surprised you? I mean, I, I thought the Republicans didn't have a prayer winning. Yes. No. It, I Honestly, I... We were talking about Palin again, um, of course, but I think either side, as I said, is going to make history, and it really has, it truly has already done so. Do you have any friends that are Democrats? Yeah, oh my gosh, And you have yes. friends that are Republicans? Oh, yes. Okay, okay, when it comes to discussing politics, how do you get along with them? What do you guys... That, that's honestly my favorite part about my friends. <laughs> um, I, I love, I love that we have such different opinions, and I mean, 
it, it would be a much more boring place. It sure we, would. We okay. How about you? You, you got friends in the Republican. Oh, oh, yeah. You guys are friends, in fact. But go ahead. And you, and it's great to have discourse and dialogue. And sometimes, I mean, one one of the people on there, Austin Slaymaker is one of the college Republicans. I know him real well, and we talk about policies, and we're actually going to be working together on pushing, you know, things like higher education proposals. And I mean, he and we just love having political discussions. So. Democrat Republicans getting yeah. along. No, the vice Better chair. Than and I do. The vice chair of um, Young Democrats is also a good friend of mine through Student Congress, and we talk about it all the time. But we get along great. Okay. Well, I tell you what, okay. I think o OU is well represented here on both sides by our friends here with the College Republicans and the Young Democrats, and we appreciate them coming on and being a part of Flashpoint.